Well, I've said that he's um, a, me turned up to 11 yeah. before. I've said um, he's basically me, but, uh -huh. but I'm in charge of uh, the decisions outside of the, off the pitch. Right. <laughs> and he's in charge of not. Although right now, he has got a slight say in what I'm saying right now. Uh-huh. That's not, that's it. <laughs> uh, for this is, uh, it's a version of me where my imagination um, gets in the way of real life. That sounded really pretentious, but no. I'm, I'm sticking with it. Yeah, I feel like I'm playing catch up. I'm 42 now. <laughs> and there's lots of people that are younger than me. I'm like, come on, I've got to kind of catch up with the youngsters. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I come to comedy quite late, so I'm kind of, I think I'm a quick, a quicker version of me back in the day. Do you think, oh, do you, do you, how do you think it's helped? Has, has it helped coming to comedy later in your career? Uh, do you think? I reckon, I reckon I'm definitely a, a more rounded person now like you know in our 20s we're crazy aren't we so i definitely have got a better um what's the word normal spencer right business spencer show business spencer can sort of do these kind of things whereas 26 year old spencer would probably be hid behind there <laughs> so, hey <laughs> do you know what I mean and that's not going to get you anywhere so yeah i think coming to it late is definitely good i would have gone off the rails i think i was gonna i was gonna ask how do you think you would have coped with say for example Starring in a very in a very successful comedy like Upstart Crow, having your own film on uh, BBC, and then an upcoming yeah. series. I mean, yeah. how do you think you would have coped at twenty six? I, I think my head would have got too big. I mean, I've got a massive head physically anyway. I mean, it is. I mean, it is a big head. Isn't no one it? knows the, the the lenses we're using on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They can't see it. <laughs> Just to get it in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, um, I think. Yeah, I think it, mess, it would have messed me up. I would have been one of those people that were kind of. <laughs> Yeah, it went wrong. Because there are people who were really successful quite quickly in their careers mm. early on, yeah. and then they kind of become a, a token of their time, like a piece of that period. Yeah. And people go, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And it suddenly defines like an era of, like, say, the, the, the early 2000s or, yeah. or, or 2010s. I yeah. mean, that's quite hard. I mean, that's obviously no one wants that, do they? No, no. I mean, fingers crossed it doesn't happen to me. But if it does, I'm happy to have had my time. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think you just got to do your stuff, and fingers crossed that the public like it. And if they don't, then you have to crack on and do something else. Become a tomato farmer. <laughs> Is yeah. that second on the list? Love a polytunnel, me. Do I you love a polytunnel? Can't can't stop looking at polytunnels on the internet. It's mad, isn't it? Forty two. <laughs> Genuinely, sort of. You know, I spent half the day going. You know, I could put some them there. Chickens there, goats there. I'd milk them in the morning. Yeah, yeah, that's, that'd be good. Do you have rural agrarian dreams? Be, be, be pretty good, wouldn't it? Take so the pressure off. What would you would you put the the goat in the polytunnel? I mean, are you polytunneling tunneling everything. I'd have the po goat would probably go through the polytunnel at the end of the season just to clear it up. Okay, you know, bit of goat poo poo. Right for the old fertilizer. fertilizer. Nice. Well, I mean, what's the reception like? Because it came out as an iPlayer short yeah. originally. And what's the reception been like? I think it's been all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do love looking at Twitter and seeing people that didn't like it. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'll, be, I'll be on Twitter on Thursday definitely looking. And what? I know that people say you shouldn't, but I really like it. What are the criticisms that you've enjoyed the most? I would ra um, There was one the other day which was, I would rather put dog poo <laughs> in my hands and clap than watch that man. I was like, That's a, that is a good image. That man? That man, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's, I mean, I was I mean like, I'm sorry about that one. I no, should have, no uh, it was really good. It was really good. I was speaking to someone the other day. Said you shouldn't, because even if you, even if you pretend that you don't mind it and you like it, you really actually do. <laughs> no, I don't. I love it. I love it. If I've annoyed someone. What's the? What is the? What? What? What is it? Was there a common thread? Is it the, the, the sort of surreal nature of it? The kind of no. I, I think. I think because it's silly, a lot of people go, "Oh, it's for kids," and I think a lot of people just want some stuff that's kind of hard hitting, which is totally cool and fine. You know, I uh, I love you know I love that stuff myself. You know, but just not what it's just not what I do. Do you think silly is underrated as a as a vehicle in comedy? Uh, I think sh doing stupid stuff in general needs to be done more in life in general. It's a very serious world we live in, and we need stupid, silly stuff in it. Uh, but I wouldn't want to say, oh, in comedy there needs to be more silly because because I've got loads of mates that do some pretty hardcore stuff or some very political stuff yeah. or some very. Um, Stuff that really is, has a point and, and, and deserves to be there. So I wouldn't sort of say, well, I think my stuff's the most important. But I would say in life in general, we should be a little bit more smiling, a little bit more silly.